Let's see if I can show you how to paint pansies on glass. We'll see if this works. Now I've double loaded my brush. This is a three quarter inch um, one plaid, one stroke glass and ceramics set. It comes in a uh, package of several sizes and I will link to one on the blog so that you can find where to find it. And I did put a little bit of white in the lighter side because I wanted the good contrast. Now I'm going to do the undercoat first or the first coat. And these are the back petals of the um, pansy. And I'm going to just do my scallop stroke. If you notice, I just went pivoted around, left the lighter um, side sticking to the center and here it is again and I am going to brush press then I lift my brush there it's got a little messy there but that's going to be underneath the next set of petals now like I said this is the first coat it takes a couple coats to make this opaque though these colors are, are doing a good job and I will let this dry before I do the second coat. Now I'm going to turn it around and do another one, except this time I am going to do the lighter on the outside edge. And I'll show you what I'm doing with, with mixing or loading. Here's my two colors, dip the two corners, blend it into the brush, and then I dip the one corner into some white to add a little bit of extra lightness. And I have the brush pretty full of paint. And I'm going to go on this side, being careful. Many times I have touched the other side when I'm doing this. And I'm going to just do my scallop stroke. And then sometimes I go over this one to do the next scallop stroke. That might, might have been better to reload or to do it this direction. So I went on the other side of the brush. You see this side has full, still full of paint. But I'll just go back into my paint and refill it for the next strokes. Now um, it's good to have several pieces ready to paint with the same colors because you're going to need to let these dry. And I have a fan I usually put them in front of so it could be drying but that's too noisy while I'm videoing. Here I did some back strokes with some purples. Um, let's see what happens when I go over it with the blue just so I can show you how I go over it with a second coat the second time around. And I usually match the colors just so you know in case you hadn't figured that part out. Now let's see, this one, it looks like I did this one first. So I'm doing the same, I'm trying to stay right on top of that one. Like I said, this bottom edge, I'm not gonna fret about because um, that one is gonna have the next petals over it. Now this time I flipped my brush over. Oh, I was gonna do the lighter coat or color on the outside and I forgot, got carried away. Um, now I'm gonna go this direction so I can flip my brush over and use that side that's had a heavy amount on it. And I did pretty good. Now if you, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see some of the purple along the edges. And if these colors match, that wouldn't be a big deal. I'm not overly concerned about the edges. Let me show you another one that is done, that is done in the same colors and you don't even notice where I didn't exactly match um, the edges of my strokes. But if you do get one that's way out there or not like to your liking, you can wipe it off. I usually use a Q-tip with some alcohol on it and that um, is small enough that I don't mess up any other or you can just maybe scrape it off with a fingernail. And so here's, that's one of them I practiced on before. These are just salad dressing jars. Now I don't think either of these are dry yet so I'm gonna pause the camera and wait for these to dry and I'll come back and show you the next layers. All right, so both of my practice pieces are dry and I wanted to mention that what I've been using is a combination of the Folk Art Multi-Surface and the Folk Art Enamels on this project. And um, another thing I've been using, this is the clear medium. Can you see it on there right here? I don't know if I have the bottle sitting here where I could show you. Oh yeah, here it is. This is the clear medium. And that just makes them flow better. I'll load up my brush and then maybe dip it once in it 
and, and um, blend it a little bit and then it just seems to make the paint flow a bit easier. So about every third or fourth stroke I will put some of that medium in it or however often you feel it needs it. And I need some more of the blues. The, the lighter blue is Look At Me Blue, which is the Folk Art Multi-Surface. And the darker blue is Cobalt in the Enamels. Now the only difference I th think there is between the two, I'm not exactly certain, is one has a glossier finish than the other. The Enamels are glossier than the Multi-Surface. They both have about the same thickness. Again, I'm double loading on my palette. Add a little bit of white to lighten the blue a little bit more. I don't blend it all the way in. And I'm going over here and dipping just a little bit in that medium and blending it into the brush. So I have plenty of paint on my brush. And I'm going to do the second layer on the petals. So the dark is to the outside and just going to try to follow. Usually I have this closer to me, but for the camera's sake I have it down here. So there's that one. And so I can flip the brush over. I'm going to start on this side, whereas I didn't before, but you'll find your way. And like I said, I'm not too concerned with the bottom. That's going to be covered by the next petals. And there's your second and uh, makes it opaque layer. And then here's the one with the lighter on the outer edge. And I'm going back to my palette, reloading my brush, the two blues and a touch of white. And I'm going to go with this one. Try to match the wavy on the outside edge as best as I can turn it so I can turn my brush. See, there's a lot more paint on this one side than that one because I used up the paint on that one. And you don't have to. You can just reload your brush to do the next one. And there's those. And let me see. Here's this one. I can do this one again. has the lighter on the outside. I can feel my brush dragging a bit so I dipped in the clear medium which really, if you could feel, it makes it just flow so much easier. Okay, and I'm going to do this one. And then I'll turn it to do this one. And there you can see, whoops, I think I got my finger in something, how it's made it opaque, but you can see there's, oops, there's a spot right there that um, has not been covered and it's the undercoat. And I can see I scrape it with my fingernail or I'll come in with a Q-tip and just wipe that off if it bothers me. And I got, now I have to wipe my hand after I grab my falling paintbrush. One moment, be right back. Okay, I'm ready to do the other petals on this one. That one has the dark to the outside again. So I will put the light to the outside. And I'm just loading my brush. As best as I can one handed because my palette wants to move. Okay, I think my brush has plenty of paint in it. So now we're gonna go this way. This is the center, so I wanna make my scallop. You notice I push down. I'll flip the brush over. Maybe I don't have enough light blue in there. Got to get some more medium paint dried a little bit while we were letting it just stuff dry. Okay, so here, point in the middle, put it down on the chisel edge, and I kind of flatten it as I pivot the brush and then lift. And you'll see that's the other two petals on the side. This one has the light on the outside, so we will go with the dark this time on the outside. Loading this brush as full as I can. Oops, it got a little bit too much. Tap. Okay, let's see here. 
touching, just pressing down as I scallop and pivot the brush. Same over here. And you can see how you can see through the paint there. It's not opaque yet. That's why it needs a second coat. Well, my other is drying. Oh, sorry, I left my fan on. Let me turn that off. Okay, I will show you how I make buds. So here, I just put it down on the chisel edge, make a scoop up, and I'll do it with a light one or a dark one on top. Chisel edge, like a teardrop. I think there's enough paint on here. Maybe I'll reload. And chisel edge. And I'm just kind of pressing as I scoop it over. And there's not really a spot for another bud on that side. So that is how I do the buds. And I'll show you with the greenery how I finish those off once they are dry. And I can do a second coat on them. Let's see if I can show you this bottom petal. Now you could do this in two petals or one. I prefer one and that can get tricky because it's a very far space and sometimes the brush runs out of paint. Now the dark or light was on the outside so I'll put the dark on the outside for this. Like I said I normally have this closer to my chest so I have more control but we'll see how we do. And I just come all the way across and make a big scallop stroke. You see right there, it got thin on paint, but how I'll fix that is when I come back to the second coat, I will start on this side and go this way so that the thicker paint for that will be on this side. And this one had the dark on the outside, so I'll flip my brush over. I still have plenty of paint on it. And I start and I scallop. along there and that makes that bottom petal. You see it ran out of paint there towards the end. And I'll show you how I fix that. I'll put this down on my shelf, grab my other one I'm working on. And that shelf is where I have my fan that I have usually blowing when the mic isn't on so that I can dry them faster. And I need to put more medium out. I don't have any medium out. Maybe I'll put it right on my palette here. Okay. Dipped in medium, give it a little more flow there. Okay, again, the light's on the outside. You could go ahead and do another bottom petal with the light on the outside, but I like to contrast it, or even sometimes I'll do the yellow on the inside with these. I like the bottom petal has yellow. And though it's really close to the bottom and kind of overlapping the bottom, that works okay. Just when I set it down, I'll have to set it like this to dry so it doesn't morph it. Now this one, I flip my brush over. I still have got plenty of paint on there and I'll do the same thing. And there's that bottom petal. And we'll let these dry and we'll come back and do the finishing touches. Now I said that I would come back and do the bottom scallop stroke the other direction. Here's the lighter side so I position it so I can do this well and I will come from this side so the majority of the paint or a lot of the heavier coat of the paint is on that side. And When I come up it coats it very well. Now you see I really didn't follow along the edge as well. I can fix that later or I can um, go back over it a third time with just this lighter blue on top and uh, fix that. And I'll go along the other side and do the same. This side is lighter because it was at the end of the stroke and I had run out of paint, sort of. Get some flow medium in here. Here is that. Now going backwards is kind of tricky for me, that's why I'm kind of messing with it here a bit. And start and just I'm trying to watch the outside edge. Inside edge isn't as imperative because I'm going to put some details in there and it kind of will cover that. I already went the second coat on 
the buds. Oh, and I didn't. Now we're going to add the detail. We're going to go with this folk art enamel lemon custard. I'm not even going to put any out on the palette. I'm just going to dip it right out of the lid because I don't need a whole lot. And this is a liner brush. This is a Royal Majestic 20 Zero. I got this out of a pack that was um, called a detail pack. And I can link it for you in my on my blog, but it had a bunch of small size brushes that really come in handy for details. And see, I made the little yellow circle in the center for that little spot that we all see on them. And I just daub it on there. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Just kind of dab it in there. Get it thick enough. This won't need a second coat. Now, while we're letting that dry, let me rinse out my brush. I am going to put on the greenery for the buds. Um, with most of my flower painting, if I'm going to have leaves, I do them first and then I go over it. So they sit behind the flowers instead of beside. So there's no gap between them. That's a personal preference. You can do it whatever way you like. Now I'm getting thicket. And let me make sure it's shaking up well. This is the Folk Art Enamel. They also have thicket in the multi-surface. And again, I'm just going to take it out of the lid. Dip it in the lid. And I'm going to go on my palette and just pull it so that my brush has a point and I'm going to go along the edges of the buds and then right up the center and I'll pull the stem down. I just kind of go up, follow the contour a little bit of the bud. I don't always go up the center as well, but a lot of times I do. And that's how I do that. Sometimes I will um, also dip into a lighter color. Let me pull out the citrus green here, along with the dark color to give it, I guess you'd say dimension. So you can see the two colors blend there. I need more of the dark. This one I won't pull it up into the middle of the bud. This one I will, and then just pull it down to meet that one. Could do little scrollies. Now to finish off the detail in the flower. I mean, you could also add, and I might do that in one of them to show you how it's done, the little whiskers. But here I've dipped into my little liner brush into some white. And then I'm going to make like an upside down V just on top, just very lightly. Hope you can see that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just an indication of white V. Now on lighter colors, I would do this in black. And let me go ahead and show you. Let me rinse out my brush and show you how I do the whiskers if I'm going to do them. Now you can do this in a dark, darker blue to, instead of black. If you don't, because I don't really have a dark blue. Okay, here's the black licorice in the folk art enamels. And I'm just going to dip my liner brush in there. Pull it on my palette so it comes to a point. Twisting. And then I'm just going to come along the bottom of that yellow and I'm just going to make uh, this, if I could do this without having it up against my chest little whiskers and pull it out. You want the finer the better. I'm getting some of these a little too thick but it's because I'm not able to put it up against my chest and get close. There and you'll see the oops, whiskers try it here on this one too. 
Now on um, some of the purple ones, I would do this with a real dark purple and I would go even out into this part. And just kind of follow. And pull them way down long. Look at pictures of pansies and you'll get an idea of what you want it to look like. See? And there it just gives it a little extra touch. And that's pretty much it for the pansies. The leaves, you can pick what kind of leaves you want. You can do the scallop leaves or